Hi, this is Madeline from Sonic Bloom, and this is the first episode of a four-part mini-series in which we'll explore how we can use the media effects in Ableton Live to generate music. All the media effects I will use here are available even in Live Lite. Except for one device, all exist also in earlier versions than Live 11, so even if you use Live 9 or 10, you can follow along except for like one example. And in this first episode, we're going to have a look at various ways on how to generate bass lines. So I've already prepped a little live set here where I've got one MIDI track that has a couple of MIDI clips that have C2, just in different rhythms here. So I can show you what change in this can do as well. And then this track is routed to the second track, which contains a um, drift preset from my drift life pack, even the free one. I'm going to link this below if you like, both of them. And then the last one is a drum kit with a MIDI clip. So we've got some rhythm going as well. And then we can get started. So right now it's just, you know, simple CT, C2 playing either like this or different rhythms. Not very exciting. And we're going to go and start adding MIDI effects now. So the first thing I'm going to add is actually the random device. So here I'm going to set the chance to 100%. You can also play around with small amounts so that the original note still pops through more often. And then I'm going to set choice to six because I want to make sure that the, uh, that the choice goes basically up six semitones maximum and I'll set it to bidirectional to make sure that it can go six semitones up and six semitones down. And so basically here, this is just like the amount of choices and scale is the number that's multiplied by. So let's also add a scale because right now any MIDI notes can be generated. And so we're going to make sure that they stay in key. And for the whole purpose of this episode, and possibly also the series, I'm going to stay with C major. But you can also, you know, use different scale presets and you can set the bass to something else if you like. And also use a different MIDI note in the clips. So I'm going to keep this and just play this. So right now a new MIDI note is generated every bar. And if I do alternate, So you could hear that it was going up first, and then once it went six up, it's now going down. But mostly I find random more exciting, but alternating can be interesting for some bass patterns as well. We can also try this now with different MIDI clips here. So that can give you a lot more interesting patterns as well, but it really depends on what your goal is like for your new track. Next up, we're going to add the arpeggiator because that will allow us a lot of variety as well. And I'm going to drop that in here between the random and the scale preset. And let's just listen to what it does with the default. So right now, since the rate is set to an eighth note, it actually generates eighth notes and not the full note anymore. And so then we can try different rates as well. So 16th notes, be faster. Triplets, quarter notes, you know, so just 
set it to whatever feels right for the, what you have in mind or just try different things and then just simply record the output here. So I could just record this as well. And then I could go in once I've recorded a longer clip and see what parts I like best and so on and so forth. Let's go back to this here. Sometimes it can also be helpful to adjust the gait. So for example, so this becomes a lot more staccato now that the gait is set. If we go up, the higher we go, the more it'll become one note again. So now we're back to a note. Then another thing we can try is different grooves. So I could try 16th as a swing, which probably will not sound great with the drum kit and the pattern I've got there. But you know, depending on what genre you're trying to achieve, this could sound great as well. I'm going back to straight and then Another thing that you can always employ is the retrigger function here. So I'm going to set it to beat and then I'm going to set it to three quarter and let's try this. So right now it doesn't do anything, but we can set it to just repeat once. So. And suddenly we have pauses in there. So this is how you can create pauses. We can go up. So this is another way how you can create more rhythms without having to do that in the MIDI clip itself. I'm going to turn this back off. So now we've got this again. And we're going to go back to infinite repeats. So this is definitely worth playing around with. And then we can also use the arpeggiator easily to create an octave bass. So the distance is already set to an octave, so it was set 12 semitones, and then we can set the step to one and then play. Technically you could go higher as well, but that doesn't sound very bass-like anymore, the higher we go. Another MIDI effect we can try is the chord. And so I can just drag that in here. I'm going to turn the random effect off for now. And then we could try this just with the default settings and see what that does. I'm actually going to take the steps down here again so it's not an octave bass anymore. Although you could use that as well. And we could try different styles as well. Or even a random one. can try different rates again as well. So just a chord with the arpeggiator can be interesting. Of course, then this would just cycle through these. If you add the random effect to this, you can get more interesting ones. I'm going to go back to up so that we can see the, well, but I hear the difference. You can also see it here in the scale effect. 
So this is interesting as well. And we can even make it more complex by using the expression control in front of the arpeggiator. So this is the only device that is new in Life 11. Um, it's also available in Life Lite. So I'm just going to be lazy here and select the one where it already says random. And then we're going to map it, let's say, to this one. So right now it's going down three octaves, which is a bit much, so we can just adjust this. So let's say we want this to be a maximum of one octave. So let's say we go, let's say we go around like 36 and try that. Okay, that's, that's 33. Yep. Okay. And we don't want it to go up further than that as well. So we could add it say to 60. That doesn't go up so high because we still want it to be bass and then we can just try it. We can also set the amount that it can change to 100% so it can shift a lot more between the min and the max. Okay, so plenty of ways how you can generate bass lines with the media facts that I've shown. You could go even deeper, but I think that's enough for now. And we're just going to look at what we can do with the different media clips that we have with different rhythms, basically, only. That's the original one. It's okay, not excited though. I like this one. So this is. Let's try this one. I like this one too. And then let's, as the last thing, just try recording it. We can just go through different clips as well. I'll just record this bit for longer. Right, so we've got quite a few bars here that we can try. And then of course, like personally, I always like to generate ideas then record them into new MIDI clips so that I still have control over what is actually generated because, you know, you might not always like something and then if you have the generative devices and you render everything out, you might not actually like the result. And so it's always a nice idea to just kind of record things out and then just try things. So let's go here, for example, try that. Maybe two bars. We're going to have to turn this off so it doesn't generate things anymore. So this, for example, is something I could definitely work with. So I could just do a right click and say crop the clip. And then we could set it to the scale. And since I've used C major, this is already correct. And then I could just fold it up and we can have a look at what's been generated. We can actually go a bit in so it, it's easier to see. And then we can see, like, do you like this? And for example, here, I don't have a MIDI note here. So we could, I could just, for example, just move this as well. Say so that, okay, so I'm going to move the last one here as well. Don't like this one. And, but you know, you get the idea. So this is how you can generate ideas for bass lines. Next week, we're going to have a look at generating melodies. So stay tuned. 
I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you did. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.